Everybody's Christian Prepared Mind 101, and I just I just know it. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Some of you are probably already primed up just by seeing that thumbnail. I'm going a little bit outside the box today as far as the stuff that I usually look at in review because I got the opportunity to review it. And it's a company that I've always been curious about, but they are higher priced knives, which for folders and such is quite a bit a higher bracket than what you normally see on this channel. And that tends to sometimes incite people to have reactions because of that. So I'm not telling you you have to buy this or anything like that, but if you had the chance to review something that was cool or looked cool even if it was a bit more than what you would normally pay wouldn't you take the chance to do it I think you would so that's what I did and this is a very surprising knife especially since this is not exactly a first impressions video because it was so different uh, I played with it for a few days and got used to it and it was interesting on how my opinions changed on that so we're going to be looking at the mf2 from extrema ratio now let's get this right out of the way right off the bat this folder on average costs 380 dollars and i know most of you pro that watch this channel at least probably have no interest in spending $380 on a folder and I'm not telling you that you should but I wanted to know myself it's like why are they so expensive uh, what, what, what is it about them so I wanted to take that opportunity to check it out so let's go ahead and get into this knife take a look at it and I will give you my honest thoughts on it so if you want to know more about something that cost about twice as much as the average Bark River I show, then don't go away. So what we first have to take into consideration is there is a very large section of the knife populace that buys and collects higher priced folders and some of those folders that I've seen I mean to them I mean this would be like a mid-range for them but what the company needs to understand is with this channel this channel was basically founded on you know budget type stuff and then we started moving up into the range of like Bark Rivers but even those are generally cost less than what this does. A JX5 costs less than what this does. But, you know, my let's go through, before we get to the specs, let me go through the metamorphosis of my impressions with this knife. So when I first pulled it out of the box, I'm like, okay, well that's some space age, Cylon looking craziness. And then the first time I flipped, I tried to flip it, it was so tight, you know, I was making jokes about the Wheel of Pain from Conan being the pivot. But then I started looking at it closer. And then what I discovered is the pivot on this is a little bit different in which it kind of like you can set how tight it is or how much it flips almost like a, a clicking ratchet action with a screwdriver. So I loosened it, I want to say one or two clicks to get it to where I wanted it. Because at first it wasn't, I mean, you had to like throw your whole arm out to the side to get the blade open. Whereas now it, it goes very smoothly. And then I'm like, well, is it too big? Well, when you consider the design intent of this folder and you know the brand in general now these are made in Italy uh, it's meant to be more of a combative type knife 
and this is the larger of the two so there's like an MF1 and an MF2 and uh, I think there's an MF3 also but this is the MF2 it's got the sub hilt and at first I'm like ah that's cool it's gonna sit on my I'm gonna review it but I kept carrying it and especially once I got the pivot out or the pivot loosened up I'm like hmm at least for me the size of this knife the handle fits my hand perfectly and then where the jimping is for the thumb or even up here this locks into my hand very very well and then you've got us you have two you have the liner lock which to be honest the liner lock is not that thick it's not that it doesn't feel like a beefy liner lock but then you've got the secondary lock right here which pushes a pin in so that the liner lock cannot go all the way over keeping it from closing now let's uh, go through the specs on this real quick and then we'll get into some of the other features so this thing has a blade length of 4.21 inches and the blade steel it's good blade steel it's a bowler n690 stainless steel at 58 rockwell now i am not that familiar with like the the european super steels now crucible i know bowler um, <clears throat> don't know as much about so I can't like quote from my own knowledge like what that is equivalent to or what what maybe crucible steel that we talk about on this channel it would be close to but I do know that I have reviewed things in the past and <laughs> it's usually a European knife and the European style knives are usually pretty crazy looking but I have uh, reviewed things with M690 uh, before the edge well I'll, I'll go I'll come back to that uh, the thickness of it is 0.14 inches or 3.5 millimeters this has an overall length of 10.43 inches the handle material is a black anodized aluminum and the total weight on this is 6.84 ounces they're built for tactical applications, so you have to be tactical to carry this. And they come equipped with a rear glass breaker. So that is that right there. They have a reversible deep carry pocket clip. And the double screw pivot, which is what we talked about here, enables the opening regulation strength. So that's what kind of discovered on my on my own I'm like okay that's it's like a little clicky adjustment to how fast this thing flips open this one fe features the sub hilt makes the grip extremely stable and avoids slippage in the hands on the blade which yes it does while the guard enables quick opening so the guard is a flipper okay so we pretty much got the basic specs down of this now let's talk about some of you know aside from the price for most people that watch this channel and I understand that I mean, seriously control your emotions when you're commenting the one thing I well, the thing I don't like and and when I watched a couple other people's videos they said pretty much the same thing I do not like this pocket clip design at all. Don't like it. I think you should just put it like any other pocket clip on this side because depending on what kind of pants you're wearing, as another reviewer noted, sometimes they, it can the material can get kind of caught up in here, makes it a little bit tricky pulling it. I just I, I don't understand why they went with this over the top idea with the pocket clip. So, not really a big fan of that.
Now I also, you know, full transparency, not having, you know, this is the first extreme ratio blade I've gotten to get my hands on. So I don't know a lot about the company's warranties or customer service or anything like that. I'm just going by what I got in my hand. Now aside from the M390 and the large size, you know, it is black anodized. It's, it's a pretty nice finish. I'm not the biggest fan of black blades, but I'm not on a SWAT team either. I do like the shape. It is a little aggressive looking. I'm sure if you pull this out in the office to open your FedEx envelope, you're probably going to freak somebody out these days. But earlier I was starting to comment on the edge. And the edge and the sharpening out of the box was very, very good. Now this oil right here is from me. And that was before I figured out the pivot. I was like, oh, this ain't going to work. <laughs> I'm like too tight. Well, what the heck? It's a flipper. Why isn't it not flipping? I guess different applications or whatnot. But well, it did come with a very good and it's just a, you can't even really see it. Let's see. I'm just uh-uh. From my eye angle, I'm trying to line up the edge to the paper. It's almost an imperceptible, tiniest little recurve to that edge. But when this thing is in my hand, it definitely wants to cut. I'm happy about that. Go ahead and engage that secondary lock. That's about what it was out of the box. Now just feeling it a tiny little bit after doing some cut tests, I went ahead and just ran it a couple times on the ceramic rod and I feel like I made it just a tiny bit sharper. And what that told me is there's some things that are kind of difficult to convey in a video, but you know by feel. And it did feel like the edge with the heat treat and all this was very easy to quickly tune up and keep it razor sharp. As a matter of fact, I made it just a, a hair sharper. And that is a very aggressive, let's see if we can get in here. I mean, this thing takes an edge like nobody's business. It was. Yeah, I mean, you want sharp, this thing came sharp. And with the tiniest bit of ceramic, it became crazy sharp. So, so big plus there. But as interesting and cool as this knife is, for my audience, whom I know very well, people are going to balk at the price tag. Now let's be honest, I did too. So they just gave, you know, when they contacted me, they gave me a couple, gave me some choices, you know, which ones are you interested in? I picked a couple and this is the one they sent. Thought they were sending more, but they got this one. And I'm like, this is a freaking cool knife. And then just so I can kind of give some information, I, I looked it up, like what's the street price was. I'm like, oh my God. My audience is going to kill me. I mean, $380 is a pretty... Well, be, to me, it's a, it's, it's a bit much. And I, I don't know why. I know most extreme ratio folders, or fixed blades for that matter, are on the pricey side. I got one person in my audience that I know that, uh, that likes them. And he wanted me to do this video on this one big chopper that they had compared to like Jess X back in the day. And it looked like a cool chopper, but I mean, we're talking 
a good chunk of money right here. So I'm not going to say, this is worth it, go buy it. That's going to be extremely subjective. And, you know, I'm not... This ain't like the old days of YouTube where I'm just, like, making it rain. So, you know, I'm on a budget, too. So the question people would ask me is, like, well, would you pay $380 for this knife? My answer would be no. Just because, I mean, to me, that 380 bucks is a good chunk of change. And with the stuff that I usually use, I mean, I can be happy with knives that cost a fraction of that. So I'm not telling you you need to get it. Do not put that into my, don't put those words in my mouth because I'm doing a video. But at the same time, do I like the knife? I think the knife is cool as hell. It, I mean, it's a, it's, a bit, a, it's a bit crazy looking, it's a bit aggressive, but I can't argue with the fact that at least in my hand, which I can wear medium or large gloves, it is the perfect size in which it becomes, I mean, that is locked in, especially with that sub hilt. That sub hilt does not bother me in any way. It is perfectly placed for my hand. Everything about this knife fits my particular hand perfectly. So if we were doing the the old style, stereotypical, hypothetical, S hit the fan thing. What are you gonna carry? And if I had this knife, this would definitely top the list uh, for a folder. But also, as a knife, the thing that, that keeps me liking this, regardless of all the headaches it's gonna cause me in the comments, it fits my hand great, and, it, and when it comes to the key thing about a knife, the edge geometry, the way it cuts, and how easy it is to tune up. Just from those quick instances, like, look, guys, I don't need 10 months to know about a knife. I've been doing this for like seven years. You know, every week for seven years. You know, I know what things feel like when I'm feeling them out, it does not take me that long. So I'm very pressed with the steel. I wish that this thing cost half of this. If this thing cost half of this in the USA, I'd be like, yeah, man, maybe save up for this. But here in the USA, you got, I think a lot more people are going to be more comfortable going with other things. But that doesn't mean this knife sucks. Now, I'd be interested in some of the other ones. I don't, I don't know if they'll send them to me because I'm, I have to, I have to call it how I see it with my audience. This is going to be too much for them. I've never, I don't think I have ever done a folder that costs this much money. I mean, if I, if I have, uh, let me know what that was because I don't recall. But 380 is actually pushing the upper tiers of what I will show for a fixed blade, a big fixed blade on this channel. So we're going way outside the box on this. But here's my honest take on it. I don't know. I wish the liner lock was a little thicker or a little stiffer. This seems pretty solid, but how solid it is in, in terms of what it's doing I would like it if it if it uh, maybe came in a little bit further so there wasn't even this much that I could push the liner lock. It still doesn't push over enough to where I can accidentally close it, but still. I do like the placement. It's not unobtrusive. Well, at first I hated the pivot. Once I figured it out, I'm like, that's actually kind of cool the way it's got the graduated, almost like ratcheting action of tightness. So you can get it right where you want it. But do I think it's cool? Yes. If I had the, if I picked it up 
in a knife store and they said, give me 380 bucks and you can take it home, I'd, I'd be like, nah, sorry. I mean, that's a, to me, that's a lot of money. And that's the way it is. Can't put it any clearer than that. It's a cool knife, it's a little pricey. So my question is, what do you think, without cussing and spitting and telling me a hundred different knives that you would rather have, just let me know what you think about this, about this knife. Uh, do you think it's too... Spacey. This is like it's like some Halo folder or something. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't play video games, but yes, I do know what Halo is. Um, do you like the shape of it? What do you think? What do you like about it? What don't you like? Let me know in the comments below. But me, hey, it's <laughs> it's kind of a fun big knife. And I'm, I've got it, so this is going to go in my rotation. Just is. Give the old paramilitary two a break here and there. Let it cool off. <laughs> so I'd kind of be interested in seeing, like, like there's an MF1 that does not have the sub hilt. It's a little bit smaller. And that looked like a cool knife, too. I wonder how much that one is. I didn't look it up. I mean, if this is the bigger one, and it's pushing 380. You know, what must that other one be? But you know what? <clears throat> I, if you've ever spent five seconds on Instagram, you cannot deny the fact that there are people out there, a lot of people, that will spend way more money on folders than we spend on fixed blades. Like the, the main audience here, the main people that watch this channel. Because if I built my audience based on expensive folders, I would have more of those expensive folder people in here and we'd have much different reactions. But, you know, I see some crazy folders all the time, crazier than this, that I look at them and everyone thinks they're so cool. I'm like, how much does that freaking thing weigh? That is like an anvil that somebody milled out and put a freaking flipper and a blade in. So anyway, I'm going to put some links to this, just on the outside chance that there's, you know, someone other than David Drake is going to be interested in this, in the description box below, in case you want one. And I'll put a link to the website in case you want to look at some of the other stuff that they got. So, I don't know. I don't know if they'll send me more after this or whatnot, but I do like it. I just don't know how many people in my audience are going to buy it. But... That's the nice thing about YouTube is the videos out there. So the people that are searching YouTube for this knife will see it and then they get a closer look at it. It's not always about you know, this, that, and the other thing. Hey, if this is too much for you, 140 bucks, paramilitary too. But it's on break right now because I'm carrying this thing. All right, guys, that's all I got for right now. Christian, prepare my 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click a like, share, and subscribe. All those links down below help support the channel. I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.